have never failed to be amazed by streams in the desert. It has been one of my favorite devotionals that, for whatever reason, because of the sufferings that I went through in my early life, maybe because the woman who wrote it had experienced so much suffering in her life and she had compiled devotionals that were very much in her day anointed or directed by the Spirit of God for her to pull them together and inspire generations after her with the writings that were put together in a book called Streams in the Desert. I don't know. I only know this. As it has fit in my life, as God has used it directly to speak to me, I have enjoyed the fellowship of His Spirit, the wonder of His love, the grace to find His will being accomplished in my life according to what is written, not just in the Word of God, which is obvious from cover to cover of Jesus and how His life would be directly the goal of all of our lives to be patterned after, but also in the very words and the very statements that are made in Streams in the Desert. My life seems to have gone in the same direction, in the same way. God has used those pages, sometimes reading them in the morning, sometimes reading them at night, but reflecting on them through my day, seeing how God has made my day to be fulfilled in His Word by inspiring a woman to have written it a long time ago. And God can use even a very donkey to speak. He can use books. He can use the Word of God. He uses His own choice as severally as He wills the Spirit of God, we are told, will use that with which He chooses to do if we have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit of God may say to us. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Psalm 37, 7. Have you prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and pray. Have you waited and waited and waited and waited and still there is no manifestation? Are you tired of seeing nothing move? Are you just at the point of giving it all up? Perhaps you have not waited in the right way. This would take you out of the right place and the place where He can meet you. With patience, wait. Romans 8.25, we are told. Patience takes away worry. He said he would come, and his promise is equal to his presence. Patience takes away your weeping. Why feel sad and despondent? He knows your need better than you do. As a matter of fact, his purpose in waiting is to bring more glory out of it all and for you to accomplish more in your relationship with Him than you ever dreamed possible, except that you were called to wait on Him. Patience takes away self works. The work He desires is that you believe. John 6.29 And when you believe, you may then know that all is well. Patience takes away all want. Your desire for the thing you wish is perhaps stronger than your desire for the will of God to be fulfilled in its arrival. For if it's in God's will, then it must be in God's timing. Patience takes away all weakening. Instead of having the delaying time, a time of letting go, knowing that God is getting a larger supply ready and must get you ready to, patience takes away wobbling. Make me stand upon my standing, Daniel 8, 18. God's foundations are steady, and His patience is within. We are steady while we wait, not before we wait. Patience gives worship. A praiseful patience, sometimes long-suffering with joyfulness, Colossians 1, 11, is the best patience of all. Let all these phases of patience have her perfect work, James 1, 4. While you wait, you will find great enrichment. You know,
I only really learned patience from a song. Cause my soul waits in silence for God only. From Him is my salvation. He's my stronghold, stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. For the Lord on high, I waited, and He heard my cry. You know, my experiences were forced upon me. My sufferings, my training, my learning were all made obvious by my forced suffering in laying in beds and suffering from Crohn's disease and being made into the image of a man dying. And I had no options but to wait. And throughout my life, God has constantly stretched that period of waiting where I at times ministered to people and I would have to wait with them and wait on them. And as I did, I learned greatly to turn my attention of waiting to expectation rather than worrying or fretting or some other anxiety of not seeing the accomplishment of what I was expecting to accomplish or to be made known as soon as I would like to wait. As a matter of fact, from that process of learning to wait, I learned knowledge from the Word of God that I didn't have to know now, but I expected God eventually to show me and reveal to me His Word so that I would never be deceived. And the greatness of the wealth of knowledge of the Word of God that He instilled in me was made manifest by waiting on His perspective of what the Bible said rather than on what people told me the Word of God meant. And I learned that all from patience, really, from waiting on the Lord completely. That until I knew from God what the answer was, I did not have an opinion. Oh, I may have thought things, but I waited until the Lord would show me, obviously, what it meant. And if there was a dissertation or a discrepancy, then I, I wanted God to answer and not man. Because I always found that somehow, whenever people would tell me things, whenever people would explain to me their perspective, it never made sense to me. It was never satisfying or complete. But when I waited on the Lord, when I patiently spent the time, years even, to have God speak or God answer, to have God do or God move, I was not just shocked at what he would say as I waited, but rather amazed at what he would do because I waited. My expectation is from him. I wait on the Lord and no one else can give me anything that I can endure with being patient about except for him to accomplish his will and his work because frankly no one else Am I that patient for him? Oh sure, the harvest is great and the seed man waits for the harvest, you know, and plants in expectation of the time to come when he will reap what he sow. But my, my great patience in waiting on the Lord is a complete realization of knowing God is in control always and that I need not fear the time span that I may have when it has nothing to do with what He may do given His timing, His will, and His way to do it the way He wants to. 
I would rather wait on the Lord than make haste and do it my way.